What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Bora Call of Duty Premiere Series Season 6 Daytona 500. This is easily the biggest race in Bora. Let's get on with the starting lineup. I'm not going to do this for every race like this, but this is a, this is a pretty big event. So, uh, first time these guys have been on track for a point race. A lot of new faces in different places. Let's get on with it. Starting on pole is Kapula Bai, switching over from Stuart Hosh Racing to Red Bull Racing. I uh, think TJ Hanley spent a long time at Rush Premier Racing, two seasons, and now he's at Rich Petty Motorsports. Ryan Kesey for his third consecutive season at Team Penske, going for his best season he's yet to win in the Calder Premier Series. Then you got the season four Daytona 500 winner Eli Bright for the third straight season in the number eight car for DEI. You got last season's champion Nick Flood. He's never won at Daytona. Um, looking to change that today. He returns to RCR for the second straight season. Then you got Kevin Villano. Uh, it's kind of the opposite of situation of Kapulabai. Kapulabai drove the 41 for uh, Storhouse Racing last season, then went to Red Bull. Kevin Villano drove the 82 for Red Bull, which Kapulabai replaced him in, but he went to the 39 for Storhouse Racing. The uh, Max Claudel returning to the College of Premier Series for the first time since Season 4. Lego Bush, as well, returning to the College of Premier Series for the first time since Season 4 for Robbie H. Racing. Ryan Winters, the highest qualifying FedEx Amateur Series driver in one of the rookie rides for Roush. The yeah, Muhammad Zane for the third straight season returns to the 38 for Robert H. Racing. Paul Wright, another amateur guy, but this time he is in the uh, rookie ride for DEI. And yeah, Thibaut Claudel returning to the College of Premier Series for the first time since season four. Rookie Perry Allen, I believe it might be the highest qualifying rookie uh, for Joe Gibbs Racing, and who is outside is his senior teammate Brad Stover for the second straight season, um, will be at Joe Gibbs Racing. He made the chase last season after winning at Atlanta. And yeah, Ruby Claudel. Uh, for the second straight season is in the 21 car, but a different team this time. Last season was Kevin Harvick Incorporated. Now it is Wood Brothers in their very first race ever in Bora. Uh, to her outside is Colin Francis, his second season in the College of Premier Series. But this is a startup team similar to Wood Brothers. This is their first ever race. This is Black Flag Autosport. You got Joseph Rakowski, his second straight season in DEI is number 15. And rookie Joe Jefferson, a uh, rookie for Rochester Racing. And then you got Joe Gibbs Racing's amateur ride, uh, Mario Ramos, in the Coca-Cola number 96. And to his outside is Donovan Dewitt, um, a rookie for Team Penske. Donovan Dewitt finished second in both Traxxas Truck Series and FedEx Amateur Series points last season. Uh, first ever race in the Calder Premier Series. You got Max Anderson returning to Red Bull for the second straight season. He made the chase last season and did really well. Nathan Stapleton, for the second straight season, returns to Stuart Haas Racing. Landon Fenway is in Team Penske's uh, amateur ride in the number 27. And Kyle Akers for the third straight season returns to the number 9 for Everham. Hunter Spartan for the third straight season returns to Team Penske in the number 77. He is one of the most winningest drivers in college Premier Series history. He has three wins, uh, which puts him like tied for like fourth or something like that. So he, he knows how to win in the college Premier Series. And to his outside is Jeff Bright. Jeff didn't know what his future would hold in the Calder Premier Series. He didn't make the chase last season, so he did not have a guaranteed ride. But he did win the second annual Veterans Day Memorial, which in turn guaranteed his ride for Season 6 and returning to HMS's number 24 for the third straight season. So Matt Oskin got his one and only Calder Premier Series win last season at Talladega, so he knows how to win at a plate track. This is his second season with Hendrick Motorsports Equipment. He's got a brand new paint scheme, but same sponsor. It's looking fresh. Uh, he's going to be a factor today. I already know it. Jay Jefferson, his first season in an actual quality ride. He drove for Stuart Haas Racing in that first season. Wasn't the best in season four. Last season, he drove for Thor Sport, which their first and only season in Cup. Uh, but now he's driving for Joe Gibbs Racing. Jay Jefferson is going to be a factor this season. The yeah, Rebecca Tyler switching from Chip Ganassi Racing to Roush Winner Racing this season. Then you got Brace Mitchell in the number 89 for Acres Racing. Uh, this is a new startup team. Brace Mitchell drove, um, and he has three career college Premier Series wins. And he's drove for Joe Gibbs Racing for the first four of four of the first five seasons. And uh, now he's starting fresh with Acres Racing, the only Acres Racing car in this field. Then you got Bullet Bill, the all-time winningest Call of Duty Premier Series driver. This guy knows what it takes to win. He won at Daytona in the night race last season. Um, his only win last season, actually. But he has five career wins, the winningest driver in history. And to his outside is Kyle Kesey in his third season in the College Premier Series. He has one win, the closest finish in College Premier Series history of season four at Phoenix. Great race. Go watch it if you haven't. The closest finish. But this is a brand new team. This is Kesey Motorsports, guys. 
they've never raced before, but they've had a really good showing in both amateur and trucks. Expect Kyle Kesey to make some noise here. Uh, this is the amateur ride, I believe, for Kesey Motorsports, though. Uh, then you got TJ Friend switching from Red Bull to Robert H Racing for this season. His second season, he's never won, looking for a nice change in scenery. Then you got Luciana Reese returning to the 43 for Petty Motorsports. Uh, she made the chase last season. She had a really strong showing, but she didn't win. Going for that first career win this season. Then you got your season four champion, Keon Eddington. He had a pretty bad sophomore slump last season, not going to lie. He's looking to really improve upon that this season. Returning to the Hendrick Motorsports from a 25 Chevy. The yeah, Abraham Motorsports is an uh, amateur ride. Steve Mullins in the 98. I know it says 10 on the headlight. That was kind of a painting mishap. <laughs> but Steve Mullins, uh, first ever race as an amateur driver. He's looking to just have a nice strong showing. Then you got Mo Akers. He was a rookie last season for Red Bull. He's returning. He had a win. He made the chase. A really strong showing, and I expect nothing less of that this season. Uh, then you got Philip John, the rookie for Roush. I believe Roush is full of rookies, except for like Rebecca Tyler. Uh, Philip John ran really well for Petty last season in amateur. Didn't make the chase, but he had really, really strong showings in, in select races. Uh, they had Jonathan Hoff moved from Stuart Haas Racing to Michael Walter Racing for season six. Uh, he actually won the one of the crown jewels last season, the COD 600 at Charlotte. Really good run for him, uh, especially for that underfunded team. And yeah, new change scenery. Yeah, Isaiah Forward. He's been in this season. He's been in this series all six seasons. Adam Makers actually missed the 500. He didn't qualify into the duels. So Isaiah Forward now has the most consecutive starts in Bora history uh, for the uh, Premier Series, at least. So he got his one and only career win last season after five seasons of trying. He got it at Atlanta. Um, so yeah, Isaiah Forward out here looking to be strong. And then rookie for RCR is Tim Randolph. He ran in the IndyCar Series last season. Um, Actually ran really well. That made him cup eligible. So he is now with one of the best teams in the Premier Series. And then rounding out the field is Burt Forward uh, for DEI. He's replacing Dylan Ebrahimian. He left his junior motorsports ride. Actually, they kind of folded. They don't have a Cup Series team no more. So, yeah, he's rounding out the field here in the Call of Duty Premier Series Daytona 500. We'll be back for the starting command. Drivers, stop your and there was the command. Season 6 is officially underway. Now, before we get started anymore, this is back to a weekly series. Atlanta will be next week for the three series. And then starting after that on our Twitter, we'll be holding polls. So you guys can vote on the schedule. You will, con you will basically dictate every race up until Homestead, because that will be the race, the season finale for all three series. So if you guys want three road courses in a row, if you vote for that, that's what you'll get. If you want a dirt track four races in a row, if you vote for it, that's what you'll get. Uh, be, bear in mind that some tracks are a lot better than others in ours. So hopefully you guys take that into consideration. But it's all up to you guys. So, enough of that. Back to a weekly series. Anyways, quickly, guys to watch for in this race. You can't go wrong with picking anybody on the second row. Uh, they obviously have what it takes to win. They both won their duels, Ryan Kesey and Eli Bright, respectively. But if you had to hold a gun to my head and make me pick one of those two, Eli Bright all day. And here's why. Since Season 4, every Speed Weeks that Eli Bright has been in, which is all three, Season 4, Season 2, or Season 4, Season 5, and Season 6, he's won a race. In Season 4, he won the 500. Season 5, he won the Clash. Season 6, he won Duel Number 2. So he's won everything you can win, except for Duel Number 1, which obviously he hasn't really been in, I don't think. Um, he might have been in one of the first two seasons. Anyways, Eli Bright, you can't go wrong picking. But if I had to pick a rookie? Honestly, Paul Wright in the 08, Eli Bright's teammate, that might be a cop-out. But those DEI cars are bad fast when it comes to Daytona. And I would pick any one of them to win. Joseph Rakowski, just a strong bullet bill, the all-time winningest leader in the College of Premier Series. Um, you can't go wrong picking any of them. Burt Ford starting in the very back, but Eli Bright's my guy to win this race. So with that, the pace car is getting ready to pull off. 40 laps here in the Daytona 500. Will everyone make it to the flag? So they get credit for the race. I kind of started right there. Cool, pull a bye with a really good start. The 45 just did not get going. Actually, the 12 and the 82 had a really good start because they kind of left Nick Flood in the 29. Everybody did make it to the flag. They got a complete lap number one, though, so they actually get, uh... Actually, no, yeah, everyone will score points this race. So, that's really good. That's really unfortunate to start the season blowing up on the pace lap. 
Ryan Kesey's going to try blocking the outside lane here. Might get a push from TJ Hanley. If you want to be aggressive and go for the lead early. Muhammad Zane going to the inside of Kevin Volano. Here comes Ryan Kesey and that team Penske number 12. He has help from Nick Flood, last season's champion. Pull it by. Doesn't have the help he needs. Here comes Eli Bright and Lego Bush on the outside. Oh, Lego, or not Lego. Uh, Eli got a really good push off that 28 there. The 82 got a really nice run with the 45. They're going to clear the 12 on the inside. We seen that happen a lot in the amateur race the other day. The outside lane, when a couple good cars got hooked up, that outside lane was fast. GJ Hanley get hung out to dry by Eli Bright. Uh, he dove to the inside. 3x3 three three throughout the pack. Pull of by leads. Ryan Kesey getting help from Nick Flood. Eli Bright with very little help from Max Claudel. Oh, and Lego Bush shoving the crud out of the 45. He's going to jump to the very outside. Pull by blocking all three lanes at once. The H trying to side draft his way up there, but he has no help. He needs someone to dive down. With the way Ryan Kesey's blocking the inside, there's just nowhere for any of these guys to go. Lego Bush is getting antsy. You see him behind that 45. He wants to get going. Pull by blocking. Oh, Paul Wright nearly getting dumped by Brad Stover in the 20. Oh, and there's a wreck in the back. That's going to be a caution. I'm not sure who that was. Looks like it might have only been one car. They're definitely racing back to the caution right now. Yep. Who will be the leader? Whoever's leading on this restart, that's going to be real clutch. So it looks like it's going to be between Ryan Keese and Kapula Bai. Kapula getting a nice run, man. That, that number 82 Toyota, he's real quick. I don't know if something's wrong with Ryan Keese, though. He just can't get going something he might be blowing up or something Kapula by and TJ Hanley will continue to be your number one and two cars we've actually never seen this happen before <laughs> the pole the front row actually held on to the front row for four laps anyways we'll actually see what just happened Luciana Reese man she had such a good season last year doesn't look like she's starting this season off the same way oh okay that wasn't really her fault at all that was a really hard hit <laughs> I thought Isaiah Ford might have clipped her, but it looks like the double zero and the one is tandem gone wrong. We'll go on, on board Philip John here because he had a very close escape. You're riding around. You can see they are clearly, they're clearly riding around just to um, you know, avoid the big one. They're just riding around. Long race. Uh, no point in getting up there and tussling. They're not even in the pack. And it looks like the one just tried pushing the o double zero and just, oh man, that's, that's unfortunate. Go off the back bumper of Kyle Kesey. That's a really, that's a couple hard hits right there. We'll be back for the restart. Can't say I expected this. Everybody will pit. Will anybody stay out and risk it? No. This should make them good till the end. Wow. All right. That's interesting. Let's see who comes out first. I'm trying to get to the, uh, where are the... Where's the, there it is, pit lane one. What pit lane two, actually? See everyone coming in. Such an advantage starting up front. Brad Stover had a really good pit stall. Ryan Winters just now getting to his box. Jay Jefferson, Ruby Claudell, and Capula by. Real fast stop. Brad Stover, man, he just. He just went from 19th to 5th. We'll be back for the restart. Pace car is getting ready to pull off. You can see who the first two retirees of the Season 6 Daytona 500 are. Burt Ford and Luciana Reese. Not how they want to start their season. Everyone else running, though, will get a top 40 as long as they don't get disqualified. Kapula Bai, who has led basically every lap up to this point, will restart. The leader, TJ Hanley in second. Eli Bright third. Lego Bush fourth. Brad Stover with an amazing pit stall. Rounds out your top five. Ryan Kesey, who looked like he was having trouble there on that last lap of the run. He's all the way down, or not all the way down. He's up, he's still in the top seven there. I couldn't really figure out how to word that. So maybe nothing. He's going to jump to the very outside. You can't pass on the inside until you get to the line. So that's why a lot of cars will jump to the outside there. It's in a little frame, right? Hope that uh, settled itself out. No one has help right now. Eli Bright's trying to go up to third, but Lego Bush did not go with him. Lego liked the outside lane on that last run. Oh, never mind. Now he's going from the top to the very bottom. He's going to pick up his teammate, Mohamed Zayn, there. Those two Robert E. Tracing cars. 
Muhammad might not be able to get up there in time. Ooh, Perry nearly clipping the 28. They're three by three. Exactly what pull by wants to see. Here comes Ryan Kesey. Obviously nothing wrong with that car. Perry Allen getting real loose in the draft. TJ Hanley getting a nice run. Capul tried blocking. Man, Capul by is blocking for all it's worth, guys. This is insanity. Perry Allen getting pushed by Ryan Kesey. That 81 car looks real unstable. I'd be careful trying to push it. His first ever Daytona 500. His first Call of Duty Career Series race in general. Eli Bright leading the middle. Lego Bush leading the inside. And how fast things change. Perry Allen, that car is, that 81 uh, Toyota is real unstable. Look at that. He looks fast, but he's unstable. TJ Hanley back up to second. Brad Stover, who had a really fast pit stop. He's trying to lead the outside lane now. How are you going to get past that 82 car, man? He is bad fast. Did I just see a wreck in the back? I did not. A couple cars losing the draft. Ooh, someone mid-pack there. Just went from the inside to the outside, or inside to the middle. Looks like it was the nine of Kyle Akers. That was real close. Cool by continuing to block. Brad Stover getting a nice run on the outside. If he can get to the outside of that 45, he might be able to do something here. Perry Allen tried blocking his teammate Brad, and it just didn't work. The furthest up Brad Stover's been. Ooh, TJ Hanley did the lead. I didn't even realize that. He had a really far out, too. I don't know what happened. I don't know if the 82 just missed the block or what. Yeah, he's so far out right now, though. This could be a problem once they catch him. Brad Stover tried going down to block the 81 there. The 81 still his quarter. Ryan Winters is pushing the crud out of that 20, though. Yeah, I don't know. I don't... Usually, the inside lane is the preferred line. You want to be on the bottom because the outside lane just drops back immediately. We're not seeing that right now. The 80, the 8 cards got real tight. I don't know if the 28 pushed him. That one, that's what made the 8 uh, fudge. That's what made the inside lane drop back so much. Uh, the outside lane looks like it's preferred line, and we've never seen it to this extent before. It's crazy. Perry Allen, though, up to second. Capullo by starting to drive back. Ryan Kesey lost his drafting partner there. Capullo's going to block Brad Stover up top. TJ Hanley has one career Call of Duty Premier Series win. It was season four at Las Vegas, and it's actually what got him into the chase. It was the last race till the chase, and he needed that win. Perry Allen now going to the outside. Ryan Kesey got a little loose there. Perry Allen's actually going to look alongside the 45 with help from his Joe Gibbs Racing teammate Brad Stover. That's the first time Brad's actually left the outside. He went down to chase the 81 down. Trying to stick with him. Perry Allen, the rookie, leading this race. Now Joe Gibbs Racing 1-2. Here comes Paul Wright. I said watch out for him. The rookie for DEI. Brad Stover now going down to block the inside. A lot of shuffling going on in this pack. Ryan Kesey still hanging out in the middle, getting pushed by T.O. Claudel. Ryan Winters, the rookie amateur driver for Roush. He's going to jump to the outside of Perry Allen here. Joe Gibbs Racing side-by-side side for the lead. Pull of starting to drop back now. The inside lane, you just don't want to be there. Absolutely strange. Joseph Rakowski, haven't even mentioned him yet. Here he comes. Looks like he is pushing pair. Or no, he's pushing his teammate, Paul Wright, in the 08. Brad Stover kind of got hung out to dry there. Ryan Winters up to second. Ooh, someone down below the apron. I don't know what happened there. We'll check that out in a minute because here comes Joseph Rakowski. Who was that? Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Perry Allen now trying to control the field. I, it was Nick Flood. I thought it was a red and black car earlier. He is now pulling into the pits. Last season's champion. So much on the line here. Yeah, he's got a little bit of damage. Might have a fender rub. So much on the line. You win this race and you're an actual Premier Series driver. You're in the chase as long as you stay top 30 in points. Actually, no, I lied. That was a season four. We actually got rid of that role this season. Yeah, if you win, you're in as long as you're Premier Series driver. Uh, so, yeah. 
So like right now, the 08 and the 96 are not eligible. So if they win, they will not make the playoffs. Or the chase, excuse me. But if that 81 or that 15 wins... Ooh, Muhammad Zayn nearly getting dumped in the back by Hunter Spartan. Here comes Paul Wright and Mario Ramos. In the top five right now, there are three amateur rookies. The 08, the 96, and the 6. Here comes Colin Francis, that new startup team, Black Flag Autosport, getting pushed by the winningest Premier Series driver in history, Burt Forward. Man, those two amateur guys, look at that tandem. They're pulling away. Oh, they're going to have a lap car here soon. Edge on and off, just damaged off pace. Paul Wright's leading the Daytona 500. Oh man, Ryan Kesey and Bola Bill, look at them leading the charge on the outside. First time we've seen a little bit of single file action. That's not going to last long because the two veterans, here they come. Ryan Kesey told me before the season started that this is the defining season of his career. He hasn't performed the first two seasons. Now with the rating system, he's with one of the best teams in the series. If he doesn't perform now, he doesn't know what he's going to do. He's driving with a chip on his shoulder. Where will the Jonathan off block? Ryan Kesey is going to dip to the inside. Oh, Bull of Bill. What a beautiful move by Ryan Kesey. That just took out a lot of good cars. Joseph Rakowski spinning Perry Allen. I don't think anyone got real damage. Oh, Rebecca Towers below the apron. There they go. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Hunter Spartan and Jeff Bright. Two veterans upside down. Unbelievable. We'll be right back to check out both of those crashes. Before we get started, let's check out this crash involving Perry Allen, who had just lost the lead in that Home Depot number 81. Ah, uh, just got clipped. I don't think anyone in this crash actually got much damage, if anything. We'll check Hunter, or just Rakowski here. Oh, yeah, going back up onto the banking. That's going to hurt him a little bit. He got a little bit of rear damage. Oh, no, yeah, he's done. I see a lot of good cars that caught, caught up in this mess. But real quick, let's check out the the Bullet Bill incident from a different view. I don't really know what the best view for this would be. Yeah, at this point, they're going to be already spinning. Yep. Check out Spectator. See if that's better at all. Now, he pulled down right in front of Kyle Akers, and it just... Between Kyle Akers and Bullet Bill, nine Calder Premier Series wins between them. Now, Hunter Spartan basically died right there. Let's go check him out. How far back was he? Looks like he'll be on the outside lane in that uh, AAA number 77. See the wreck happening. Caution's out at this point. So this wreck right here, Rebecca Tyler and that red and white's going to go down on the apron. I wasn't even her actually. It was a Lego bush. Oh man, up into the catch fence, guys. Unbelievable. Who had a good on board of that? Let's see. Let's go on board J. Jeff or Joe Jefferson. That's crazy. That is crazy. Quite All right, on board, Kevin Volano. And he escapes it with no problem. Now that's how you do it. I don't really know the best view to check this crash. There's so much has happened. I feel like 20 of the Lego bush slid down and just came back up. Unbelievable. Count Eddington, Tebow Claudell, Muhammad Zane, Jeff Bright, countless others. The big one has happened. Alright, Pace Car is getting ready to pull off. It looks like the 29 is leading, but he is the last car on the lead lap, so he's going to hope for a quick caution before he gets lapped here. Uh, we'll see who all DNF'd off there. You got Philip John, uh, Joseph Rakowski, Nathan Stapleton, Donovan Dewitt, Jeff Bright, uh, Max Claudel, Tebow Claudel, uh, Samet Osgin, Hunter Spartan, Keon Eddington, and then the four of. Oh, Mo Akers. A lap down is TJ Friend, Rebecca Tyler, and Jonathan Hoff. I don't know where TJ is. 
Pace car rolls off, or pulls off, Nick, Fl or not Nick Flood, Ryan Kesey is your leader. We are officially past halfway now, coming to lap 22. And I know the 12 has a little bit of damage. I know the 06 and the 00 definitely have damage. So it's going to be interesting to see where these guys go. Brad Stover's going to get hung up behind him. Yeah, Ryan just handled that as perfect as he could. It's like only two, three, maybe four cars actually pulled away from that, uh, that are on the lead lap. It's uh, Ryan Kesey, Paul Wright, TJ Hanley. A lot of cars caught up behind those with damage right now. Paul Wright going to the inside. TJ Hanley doesn't know where he wants to go. The 29 side drafting the 12, trying to stay on the lead lap. There's no lucky dog in this series, guys. You fall lap down. It's so hard to get back on the lap at Daytona. You have to lead the pack and then hope for a caution immediately, and you have to race back ahead. They need to stay single file back there if they want to catch. Never mind. Caution is out, and the 29 is going to be stuck a lap down. See, the 12 must... He side-drafted his way back to the lead. We'll be right back to see what just happened. All right, watching Landon Finway. He was running 12th the last time by. He's going to pull down right in front of Kevin Volano. They're going to... Kind of get hung out. Oh, Capula buys in it. Your pole sitter. Eli Bright somehow sneaking through. They're still wrecking. Brayson Mitchell's in it. Joe Jeffers or Jay Jefferson, TJ friend. Man. Going on board, Eli. That was. Wow. Right behind Isaiah Ford beside Kyle Akers. He sees it happening. If that's not lucky, I don't know what is. Oh my gosh. He's going to have to go change his pants after that one. Let's see, actually, he's going to go from about 20th. How many cars that wipe out in front of him? He's going to cross that line and go to... Okay. He lost a couple spots checking up, man. Actually, yeah, he's definitely... I don't know, man. All right, anyways. Pull it by right here. He's going to get hooked. Oh. Oh, God. Who did that just head on to the wall afterwards? Might have been the 89. Oh, he almost had it missed, and Lego just clipped him. Oh. Goodness. One more person I want to go check out off. Uh, yeah, check out off that one. The number 96 of Mario Ramos. Off that back bumper. I must have passed it. Everyone's just pushing for all it's worth right here. Insane. He did clip the wall. Kind of pushed the doubles, the 06 into the wall. Unbelievable. We'll be back for the restart. Pace car is getting ready to pull off. See who DNF'd off that one. Uh, you got Landon Fenway, TJ Friend, Joe Jer Jay Jefferson, damn it, Rebecca Tyler, Brayson Mitchell, wow, Rebecca, all she did was hit the wall, weird, uh, Kevin Volano, Isaiah Ford, Capula Bay, and Ruby Claudel. If you are still running at this point, you're getting a top 20. A lot of cars DNF, but this hasn't really been a wreck fest. Just whenever they wreck, they take everyone out. Ryan Kesey leads. Uh, hopefully, no one gets caught up behind the double zero and the 20. Oh, the 29 actually is maintained speed. The double zero is the one everyone's stuck behind. Ryan Kesey. Top five goes Ryan Kesey, Paul Wright, TJ Hanley, Colin Francis, and Tim Randolph. Uh, fourth and fifth, man. Pretty surprising. Not only is one a rookie, another one's a brand new startup team. That's nothing. Not that's not knocking uh, Black Flag Autosport or Colin Francis. Oh, this doesn't look good. TJ or er, Nick Flood, man, he's about to dump the leader. He is side drafting the leader. He's doing everything he can to get back on the lap. Ryan Kesey, you got to be careful in that situation, man. That 29, he might be a past champion, but, man, everyone wants to win this 500. Muhammad Zayn trying to pull off to the pitch, nearly causing a wreck right there. Ryan Kesey getting some help from Paul Wright. going to push him back past TJ Hanley. I know it's impressive seeing Ryan Kesey lead this race the way he is, but how about Kyle Kesey, that number 37 for Kesey Motorsports startup team? Nick Flood really wants back on this lead, yeah, on this lead lap. 13 to go, 12 and a half now. He's going to make it three wide for what would be second. Not many cars left in this pack because of the double zero holding people up on the restart. Hopefully we're done crashing. 
Ryan Keese, he's just got to keep blocking the way he is. Here comes TJ Hanley with a huge run through the middle. Paul Wright has been real loyal to that 12 car, though. 12 to go. Max Anderson jumping from the outside to the inside. Oh, what was that I was saying about loyal? Can Cole and Francis get up there and do anything? That 12 is going to start side drafting for all it's worth. He's getting a real nice run. He has no help. The 08's going for the lead. If the 08 wins this race, he will not be in the playoffs and, or in the chase, and no one will lock the yeah, lock their way in. I'm so excited I can't talk right now. I'm sorry. Nick Flood can try to get up there and helping Ryan Kesey out. Man, that 12 is so strong on the outside. Sorry about that. People loud outside my door. 11 to go. There's Mario Ramos pulling off from the pits. Everyone should be plenty good on fuel. We had so many cautions, and they've already pit. 29 really wants back on that lead lap, and I expect him to try to get an underneath the 12 here off to. There's a lapped car up ahead. That's Muhammad Zayn just came out of the pits. I don't think he's technically off pace, but he just came out of the pit, so he's not up to speed yet. 29 just pushed the 12 really far out ahead. Everyone's trying to get single file now. There's no point in racing so hard up here because if you wreck yourselves, you have such a big gap over everyone else because they're not formed up enough that as long as you stay single file and settle between yourselves at the end, one of you will win the Daytona 500. We've never once had a repeat winner in the Daytona 500 either. And looking at it, I don't think we're going to have one today. Where's Eli Bright? He's 15th. Uh, Alexander Rowe did not qualify in through the duels. So... Unless you have a quick caution here and restart with like four to go, I think we'll have a first time winner in the 500. TJ Hanley pushed Ryan Kesey out. Now he's going to go to the inside. Nick Flood. Lap car. Uh, the 08 did get held up by the 38 of Muhammad Zayn. Looks like Muhammad Zayn pulled high. He didn't want to cost anyone the race. These guys, they really need a caution. Wow. I don't know how the 45 didn't get the pass in. But eight laps to go, or nine laps to go now. I thought they were coming to 33. These guys, they've got to start getting formed up for those top three pull away. Paul Wright has no help here. The 12 so far out ahead once that 45 catches him. Unless the 29 does that. Here comes Paul Wright now. Tim Randolph, Colin Francis. You got Max Anderson, Ryan Winters, and Kyle Kesey. Mohamed Zinn's a lap down. Uh, Steve Mullins, Kyle Akers. A couple of Everham cars, both have a little bit of damage. Then Brad Stover, Bullet, Bill, and Lego Bush, Perry Allen, uh, Joe Jefferson, Eli Bright, who actually does have a little bit of damage. Uh, Mario Ramos, Jonathan Hoff. That's everyone on track. Eight laps to go here in the 500. The top four are caught up, all single file. Here comes <laughs> Nick Fludge, is not going to give up on this getting back on the lap thing. Sad part is, if he gets back on lead lap, and there's a caution right now, and he passes the 12 coming to the line, he could still win this race. They'll restart with maybe three, four to go, uh, at very minimum two, if there's a caution right now. Uh, and Nick Flood, very little damage, if any. He could get up there and win. TJ Hanley doing the smart thing here. He has no help. He doesn't want to risk falling further back. Uh, he has a good car. He could win this in the last second if he needs to. You don't want to wait too long, though. Once we get under five to go, if there's a caution, the likelihood of... Getting this thing going back green is very slim to none. So you don't want to wait too long. Paul Wright jumping to the outside with no help. Seven to go. That right there is going to help Tim Randolph and Colin Francis catch up. It looks like Kyle Kesey, Max Anderson, and Ryan Winders are going to lose the draft here. Might just be a five-car race. Uh, Max Anderson could get up there, I suppose, but that's six and 37. It's going to need a, a really big hiccup. They're probably going to catch Jonathan Hoff for the end of the race, though. The 08 and the 12, they've been loyal to each other. The 08 peeking his nose underneath, letting Ryan Kesey know that if he sees a gap, he's going for it. Tim Randolph, Colin Francis can't quite get up there. Uh, this is about the close they've been. TJ Haley now going back underneath Paul Wright. As long as I stay single file behind uh, Ryan Kesey, I like his chances. Now five and a half laps to go. It's getting to crunch time. If there's a caution now, you, you probably don't want a caution right now. Uh, if you're anyone other than like the 84, the 6, or the 37. We're getting to the point now, though, if there's a caution, uh, even if Nick Flood 
it was somehow managed to get up ahead of the 12, and it's too little too late. If I was him, I would just back off. He can't win the Daytona 500 at this point, five to go. Just don't risk ruining it for someone else. I'm sure about if they catch that double zero, five to go now. Paul Wright hung out to dry in the bottom. He might get help from Tim Randolph, who's actually up there now. Colin Francis just trying his best in that black flag auto sport car. Really good run for him. He could get top five in the Daytona 500. Oh, TJ Hanley with a huge run. This is the first time we've seen Ryan Keese get challenged in a couple laps. Oh, but no one's going with TJ. That hurts, man. Not one person went with him until it's too late. Now Ryan Keese might actually get back up there and clear him. Four laps to go in the Daytona 500. Ryan Keese so far out ahead. I don't like this for him. Oh, but there's a double file behind him. Unbelievable. Ryan Kesey. Three. I apologize to your people in the hallway. Three seasons in the College of Premier Series. Two full seasons. Zero wins for Team Penske. Almost got let go of his ride. He announced last season, midway through, that he was not going to be returning to the 12 car. They worked things out, and he's back. Could he get his first ever win in the College of Premier Series Daytona 500? If he wins this, um,. He'll be the first person to ever win a duel and the 500 in the uh, Premier Series. Three laps to go if there's a caution. Now it's over. Nick Flood helping out Ryan Kesey. Colin Francis is back up there now. This is a five-car race. Tim Randolph got hung out to dry. You're going to see a lot of battles this season between RCR and Team Penske. Right now, you got one of each inside the top five. Oh, there's the double zero. Who does he block? You guys need to go low. Ryan Kesey might get hung out. Oh, no. Oh, Jonathan Hoff and Ryan Keese. There's going to be words after this. Oh, no, this dust. Oh, that's Ryan Winters. Luckily for Keese, I don't think that's going to hurt him too much. This might just give TJ Hanley the win. Coming to two to go. Oh, man, there might be a fight in the pits between Ryan Keese and Jonathan Hoff after this one. Unbelievable. Can TJ Hanley return to victory lane for the first time since season four? Or can the rookie for DEI, Paul Wright, get it? He's not even a Premier Series driver. Colin Francis getting help from Nick Flood. Tim Randolph's there. Ryan Kesey's trying to get back up there. Paul Wright to the inside a lap and a half to go. If there's a caution now, it is definitely over. Paul Wright to the inside. He has no help, nor does TJ. It's going to be a one lap dash to settle it. Ryan's back up there. He's taking the outside. He was strong up there earlier. Now he's going to the inside. A lapped car now separates first and second. Ryan Kesey back up to third. He's definitely got the fastest car right now, but is there enough time? One lap to go here in the day to win a 500. Nick Flood pushed TJ Hanley out front. Will the 29 dive low? Paul Wright's driving defensive. He's trying to get underneath. Here comes Ryan Kesey. If the 29 goes below the 45, that'll end it. That'd be a really stupid move for the 29 to do, though. Coming through turns 3 and 4. Ryan Kesey trying to do the outside all by himself. Coming off turn number 4. Look how strong that 12 is. It's not going to matter. TJ Hanley wins the Season 6 Daytona 500. Unbelievable. Absolutely gutted for Ryan Kesey. That was his win, and a lapped car completely ruined it. Um, but that was a really strong run going back up there to second. He nearly just won that race. If there's one more lap, I don't like TJ's chances. That's all I'm going to say. But nonetheless, Richard Petty Motorsports expand to a two-car team for the first time in a couple seasons. TJ Hanley, his career was looking down. He didn't do much last season. Missed the chase for Roush after having a strong season four. He's in the season six chase with Richard Petty Motorsports. Unbelievable. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, man, that was a fun race. Kind of kind of dull at the ending. Not many cars left, but man, these guys, they duked it out. Wow. All right, we'll be back. Look at your official results. All right, your official top 15 goes. TJ Hanley with a second career win is in the chase for season six. Ryan Kesey, second place, might be his career best finish. Paul Wright, the rookie, absolutely stealing the show in that DEI amateur ride 
and P3, Colin Francis, the new team, Black Flag Autosport, they're looking at the plate races to be their one and only shot to get into the playoffs. That sounds bad, I know, but it's a startup team. They're lucky their engine didn't blow. You never know what to expect. Your first race, they're going to get a top five. Tim Randolph, the rookie for RCR, the best finishing RCR driver. All three RCR drivers made the chase last season. All three had wins, but a rookie is going to get the only top five for him. How about that? You got Max Anderson for Red Bull in sixth. Kyle Kesey, that new team, Kesey Motorsports P7. That's not quite as impressive as Colin Francis, but that is equally as, like, jaw-dropping that car got top ten. He's not even a full-time driver, guys. You got Steve Mullins, the rookie driver for Everham. Brad Stover, ninth, and Bullet Bill, tenth. Uh, resting quickly through 11th through 15th is Lego Bush, Kyle Akers, Perry Allen, Joe Jefferson, and Eli Bright. You can see everyone else finished. Uh, Nick Flood, 16th. He just couldn't quite get back on the lap. 20 cars finishing, 15 on the lap. Looks like a wreck fest, but it really wasn't. Just a couple big wrecks took everyone out. You see everyone else finished. Notables outside uh, the top 20 from seasons past. Capula by your pole sitter, 22nd. Isaiah Ford, 23rd. Um, Mo Akers, 30th. Hunter Spartan, 32nd. Samet Oskin, 33rd. Jeff Bright, 36th. Um, Luciana Reese, 41st. That was the Daytona 500. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed it. I never asked for likes, but that was a really fun race for me. Uh, just hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. Congratulations, TJ Hanley. Tough break for Ryan Casey. Like I said, the comments might be a little fight between him and Jonathan off. Who knows? Um, world star. But that was it. Atlanta returns next week. You'll see qualifying for the three series throughout the week. And the next weekend will be the races. So, once again, congratulations to TJ Hanley. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Can you make fans stand and scream your name? Have you hit them in the ass? Never let off the gas till you rode into victory lane. He said, boy, do you know how it feels when you're running three wide? Cause if you're Daytona bound, let me warn you, you're in for